Praise the Lord, Christian Life Center. If we could all stand in the building this evening, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I've come into this place and I just feel expectation in the building tonight. I feel there's a, an expectation for the Lord to move in a mighty way, for the Lord to have his way tonight. And, and all I know is I just want to be aligned with his will tonight. I just want to be a, a yielded vessel. I want to surrender my heart. I want to surrender my mind. I, I want to surrender the cares of the day because at the end of the day, I don't want the Lord to pass me by tonight. Is anybody with me in that? I don't want the Lord to pass me by tonight, God, but all that you have for me, Lord, that's what I desire. God, all that you desire to do tonight, God, uh, help me not to be a hindrance, Lord, but to walk uh, in the spirit, to, to be led of your spirit tonight, God. Uh, and Lord, right now, uh, let's lift up our voices, church. Lord, right now, God, we desire uh, to encounter you in a mighty way, Lord. Uh, we want all that you have for us tonight, God. Lord, for there's nobody like you, and there's nothing that compares to you, Jesus. There's nothing that compares to the sweet presence of the Lord. There's nothing that compares to a genuine encounter with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Oh, church, I feel like there's some distracted minds tonight. And I'm not saying this against anybody, but I think we got to set our mind on Christ right now. I don't want this service to go uh, another inch forward without us being uh, positioned for what the Lord wants to do tonight. Uh, so whatever you have to do, Lord, I, I cast aside every weight. I, I cast aside every sin. I cast aside the cares of the day. God, it's me and you tonight. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, Lord. Lord, have your way in every life, in every heart, in every mind tonight, God. We want all that you have for us tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come on, church, it's okay to lift up your voice. It's okay, church, to lift up your hands, to, to encounter, to engage with the presence of the Lord that is in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I encourage you to stay in this same vein of worship and praise as the praise team comes tonight. You may be seated if you like. No thing can compare 
I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Sing Holy Spirit. If you know it, sing it with us. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free.
experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your to you, Jesus. Nothing can compare to you. No one, nowhere. We love you, Jesus. Lift up a praise from the earth. Lift up a sound from the earth. To the great and mighty God who holds the universe in the palm of one hand. We love you, Jesus. There is a song arising, rising from every nation, a song of praise for what you've done. There is a shout arising, a thundering shout of freedom from every heart that you have won. And I will not withhold my praise from you. Shut it out, Jesus, you're the victor, my defender, you're all I need, my redeemer, you're my healer, and I will praise you, I will praise you, Jesus, you're the victor.
There is a song of rising, rising from every nation, a song of praise for what you've done. There is a shout of rising, there is a shout of rising, a thundering shout of freedom from every heart that you have won. champion, Lord of everything, you defeated hell, now the battle's won, all my chains are gone, you have overcome, you're the mighty God, you're the risen King, you're the champion, Lord of everything, you defeated hell, now the battle's won, all my chains are gone, you have overcome, you're the mighty God, you're the risen King, you're the champion, Lord of everything, you defeated hell, now the battle's won, all my chains are gone, you have overcome, you're the mighty God, you're the risen King, you're the champion, Lord of everything, you defeated hell, now the battle's won, all my chains are gone, you have overcome, Jesus, you're the victory. My defender, you're all I need, my redeemer, you're my healer, and I will praise you. I will praise you, Jesus, you're the victor, my defender, you're all I need, my redeemer, you're my healer, and I will praise you. I will praise you, mighty God, you're the risen king, you're the champion, Lord of now the battle's won, all my chains are gone, you have overcome. You're the mighty God, you're the risen King, you're the champion, Lord of everything. You defeated hell, now the battle's won, all my chains are gone, you have overcome. You're the mighty God, you're the risen King, you're the champion, Lord of everything. You defeated hell, now the battle's won, all my chains are gone. him tonight. Hallelujah. I think we ought to give him glory today. Hallelujah. Come on. Does anybody believe we serve a mighty God? You're the mighty God. You're the risen king. You're the champion. Lord of everything. You defeated. Come on.
chains are gone, you have overcome, you're the mighty God, you're the risen King, you're the champion, Lord of everything, you defeated hell, now the battle's won, all my chains are gone, you have overcome, you're the mighty God, you're the risen King, you're the champion, Lord of everything, you defeated hell, now the battle's won, all my chains are gone, you have overcome. God, you're the victor, you're the victor. Oh God, you're victorious today, Lord Jesus. My God, I know it doesn't matter my circumstance, you're still victorious, God. It doesn't matter what I'm going to, you still have the victory, Lord. Does anybody feel that in the Holy Ghost, that Jesus, he's still on the throne? Come on. He's still on the throne. Oh, we praise you because you're Lord. We praise you because you're king. Oh, somebody give God praise worthy of a king. Somebody give God praise worthy of a king. Oh, we love you, God. Oh, yes, 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 God. Yes, yes. Hey. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost today. I feel like God is doing something in the house of God today. <laughs> no matter what we're going through in life, it's very important that we remember that Jesus still sits on the throne. <laughs> no matter what we're going through, he is still Lord. There's something powerful when all hell comes at you and yet you're still able to say Jesus is on the throne he has all power he has all might there's just something about a child of God that even when they're at their wits end they're able to say I know my God lives and I know he is mighty to respond oh Today we have a need of a precious saint. Many of you know her, Sister Tej Singh. At this time, she is in the ICU at St. Joseph's with a heart condition. She's supposed to go in for a third surgery soon. And her body needs a desperate touch from God. I believe God can do it in Jesus' name. Come on, I believe God can reach down and touch her. He's going to give her favor. And we're going to pray that God brings her through it in the name of Jesus because he's still on the throne. I said he's still on the throne. We're going to pray for Sister Tej Singh, but we also want to pray. There is virtue in the building tonight. You know, when Jesus was passing by and the woman with an issue of blood touched Jesus, the hem of his robe, virtue released from him. God is releasing virtue tonight. Do you need anything from the Lord? He's releasing virtue for you. If you have a need, you already know what to do. I want you to raise your hand. If you have faith that God can respond, you have, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be financial. It could be physical. It could be healing. It could be spiritual. It could be emotional. God's going to respond to your need today. 
And church, this is what we're going to do because we know that our God is on our throne. We're going to reach our hands to each and every individual. We're going to pray for them in the name of Jesus. And let's remember Sister Tej Singh, but we're also going to pray for the whole congregation tonight. Can we do that believing today? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Just reach your hand right now. God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come before you tonight. We come before you, Lord Jesus. We believe in the power of your name. We believe in the might, God, of your spirit. Lord God, we pray, Father, right now for Sister Tej Singh, Lord Jesus, that you would just touch her, God, wherever she is. You meet her, God, in that room, God, wherever she is. In ICU right now, you would touch her body, God. You would give her body strength, God, tonight. In the name of Jesus, you would give her, Lord God, favor and blessing, Lord. I pray for every need, God, that's in this building. I pray, God, that every need, God, whether it be financial, it be spiritual it be emotional Lord God I pray you supply God just supply right now by the power of the Holy Ghost supply for the need God's touching somebody's need can we just pray a little bit longer Lord healing in the name of Jesus we believe in you God today God, move, Father, through the pews. Move from the back to the front. God, move in the balcony. God, move, God, and let your virtue be poured out tonight. Let your virtue be poured out tonight. Uh, can we just give God a sound of worship, a sound of praise for what he's doing? We thank you, Lord. Now we're going to pray for our city. I see souls and souls coming to the house of God. We've been seeing them in Lifeline. And you know, the reason why I'm up here and why you see a lot of young adults is because we have a very, very special thing happening in the SEA gymnasium where Lifeline, our young adults, have church. Uh, we are, in a way, uh, not remodeling, but we're putting up sound panels to help with the sound. Amen. And uh, it's, it's kind of occupying that. But you know what? It's part of the vision because God wants Lifeline to be there. And he wants us to pack the building out with new souls. Amen. We're having Bible studies. We have new believers coming to our Bible studies. We're baptizing people in Jesus' name. I see the waters troubled almost every Sunday at the 99 facility with baptisms. And we're going to keep praying in Jesus' name. When we start seeing fruit of our labor, that's not the time to stop praying for the revival. But it, when, we, when we smell blood, we got to attack further. Uh, hallelujah. When we see weakness in the enemy's camp, that's when we pray harder. So can we pray right now for Stockton? In Jesus' name, Lord, we come before you today, God. We come before you. We thank you, God, for the move of your spirit that we are experiencing in this church. We thank you for bringing new souls, new families, new people, God, to the house of God. We thank you for filling them with the Holy Ghost. But I pray right now that the flow would just continue out, God. I pray you would use each and every new soul to reach their own family, to reach their friends, to reach their co-workers, that you would bring a second and a third wave of revival to CLC. Bring a second and a third wave of revival to your people. We've only seen the first, God. Bring more, God, and flood our city, God. Flood our state, flood our nation with revival. That the voice of the church in Stockton, California, would reach out, God, to influence the nations. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I got to be careful with this. Amen. Because the Spirit might just draw us to a place of no return. Amen. That's all right. I feel the presence of God. Anybody else feel that in the building? We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. You may take your seats for a few moments. We're staying in the Holy Ghost. I believe God has a mighty thing for us today. I do have a few announcements for everybody. This coming Friday on May 13th at 7 p.m. here in the West Lane campus, we're doing something very special and very meaningful. We have our SEA 8th and 12th grade graduation. All right. 
If you want, come out and support uh, so many of our young people that are going on to a new season of life. Amen. Uh, and we have a few announcements here for our lifeliners, our young adults that are here in the building. God bless you all. I see quite a few of them scattered throughout. Amen. We have a lifeline Sunday night service. Sunday night service. Now, don't get confused here. All right. It's just a play on words. We're not having church, but you're playing volleyball because we're in a service of volleyball. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're having that at 630 this uh, coming Sunday uh, here out in the field in the pavilion. Thank God it's still staying a little cooler. Okay. So we can enjoy the evening. It's going to be such a great time. We also have a baby dedication coming on the May 15th. Uh, make sure to register at, uh, on the website, clministry.com slash baby dedication, or call the church office. We'd love to get connected with you and uh, tell you all about that. If you know somebody who just had a baby, you know, talk with them as well. It's a good thing to dedicate that baby to the Lord and give them over to God. Amen. We have new member orientation on June the 4th. Hallelujah. New members. Those are signs of our revival. We're already having to do another one. We already have people signing up. Praise God for that. Amen. It's, make sure to register on the website as well, sealministry.com slash membership. We also have our Lifeline Deeper Prayer Retreat coming June 16th through 19th. Last year was so, so powerful. And you know, the evidence of that is present today because... We, we are quickly filling up uh, in our spot. So if there's a young adult in this place, you are going to have a touch of God if you go up to this prayer retreat. We spend all weekend, uh, all uh, and actually we're starting on Thursday this year. So we're going to have an extra day. We're going to be up there studying about prayer, studying about the word of God, praying with one another. And uh, we know that God is going to meet us there. So please make sure to sign up out there in the lobby. And, uh, and we'll get you signed up as soon as possible. We are going to fill up all of our spots. I guarantee it. Uh, yeah, we're going to fill up all the spots. This is crazy. It's not like last year. People are signing up early. We want you to be involved. We want you to go to that event. Amen. All right. Um, just one more thing here. It's uh, $145, which is actually not that expensive for four days. Amen. Uh, we're going to have a good time in the Holy Ghost. It's now time for our Wednesday evening tithe and offering. All right. Can we stand to our feet today? Amen. It's a good thing to give to the Lord. We know that we are not giving to a single individual. We're not giving for the glory of any individual, any man or woman. We're not giving it for the glory of an organization or even for the glory of Christian Life Center. It's for the glory of God and for the kingdom of God. Whenever you sow a seed of offering, you're sowing it into the kingdom of God. And it is part of our worship to the Lord. Amen. So why don't we just give it to the Lord in this moment in time. Just offer it to him in worship. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord God, for the presence that we feel here tonight. God, we thank you for the Holy Ghost, Lord, here today. I pray, God, that you would just continue to move on our lives and move on us as we give. Bless every giver, God, as they give their tithe and their offering. Multiply in their lives, God, so that they can re sow into the kingdom of God and propel this revival forward. We're putting together our efforts, God, as a people to propel this revival forward. Multiply it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. Amen. You're welcome to come and to give. The balcony, they'll wait on you. God bless.
Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many grateful to be in the house of God on a Wednesday evening? Amen. Praise God. I feel the presence of God. Why don't you do this? Why don't we all stand just one more time all across the building? Why don't you turn around, find somebody you don't know, someone you might have not recognized before. Maybe they're a young adult. Welcome to the house of God tonight. Meet a, meet a couple people, meet a new, couple new names tonight. Amen, amen, amen. If you can make your way back to your seats, praise God. Make your way back to your seats, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm grateful to be in the house of God, amen, in the West Lane Main Sanctuary tonight, amen. Glad to have Lifeline here tonight. Lifeline, where you at, amen? I love, I'm honored. I am, at, and I mean this with the utmost sincerity. I feel so honored to pastor this group. This is the most radical, sold out, loves Jesus with all of their heart group in the entire world, amen. And they've got to put up with me every week so you know that they're good Christians, amen. And I'm grateful for them, grateful to be here tonight. The message that I have prepared, uh, well, I'll say this before, Brother Abrego mentioned just a moment ago, but I wanna elaborate just a little bit. Uh, we are uh, starting a project that is an eight month project. Uh, we moved into the gymnasium and there is, we have service in there for the past eight months and there is a tremendously bad echo in the room. And we've been raising money for eight months researching, finding the right equipment, and everything just came to fruition, and we have men in the gym right now installing, and just so grateful. So it's a big deal for us. We're very excited. Uh, Pastor Haney said concerning the project, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if they can't hear, they can't be saved. Amen. So we're trying to make it so they could hear. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, the message I had tonight was very much prepared for Lifeline in the young adult age. Pastor Haney, uh, uh, several Sundays ago, made some very important comments. He, he preached about Nehemiah and the falling down of walls and uh, re-examining, interrogating our lives to find out which walls have fallen down. And then Sister Haney on Sunday, Mother's Day, what a wonderful message that Sister Haney preached on Sunday she began to touch on some similar themes, and uh, I felt this vein in the Holy Ghost come upon me and uh, have a subject that I was going to preach to the Lifeliner. So the message tonight, uh, I am directing at everybody 30 and under, amen. If you're over 30, uh, then you have the ability if you want to receive this message or not, amen. But I do feel this for the young adult age. I have learned something about going to church that everybody will receive something different out of a service. Has anybody experienced that sensation before where you go home with your spouse and begin to discuss the service and you say, man, I really got this out of the service and your spouse got something completely different out of the service. I mentioned this to Lifeline a little while ago, but it's just too, it's just too cute not to share again. My daughter Camilla, a couple uh, uh, of months ago, Brother Lopez was preaching on a Sunday morning and he was preaching about Elijah and the power of a man of faith that will stand with God. And he began to describe the story in detail, how Elijah stood on Mount Carmel and he slayed the 450 prophets of Baal. I mean, Elijah was the man and he stood for God on Mount Carmel. And I was sitting next to my six-year-old daughter, Camilla, and it uttered out of her mouth when he said those words, she just with amazement and awe, looked up and said, wow. And I said, it's working. <laughs> all the prayers, all the Bible studies, it's working. And I looked at her and she continued. She goes, wow, a 
whole mountain of caramel. <laughs> so I realize everybody's going to get a little bit different message out of a service sometimes. But I don't know if you're going to feel uh, compelled, inspired, convicted, motivated tonight. But I do have a word. I do feel the Holy Ghost is, has me to share. So if you have your Bibles, uh, Ephesians 5. 18, you should already be there, Ephesians 5, 18 and 19. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Verse 19, speaking to one another in psalms and making hymns and spiritual songs, singing, everybody say singing, and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So with the help of the Holy Ghost tonight, I want to preach to you on a subject, why music matters why music matters if you put your bible down next to you and just right where you're seated if you could just lift both hands up to heaven and ask that god would prepare the soil of your heart to receive whatever he wants you to receive tonight i'm going to say a lot of things tonight but i want you to pray god what do you want me to receive out of this message in the name of the lord jesus i come before you one more time humbly lord i need you right now more than i've ever needed you god i pray that you would touch the hearers let it be a blessing to them let it be a blessing to their lives. So many people have come in from work weary in body. Lord, let them leave refreshed and nourished in the spirit with direction in the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray that you would propel those forward in ministry, Lord Jesus, that have fallen by the wayside, that they would be inspired, that they would realize that there's still a call on their life. Hallelujah. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. I think it's very interesting in this passage, Ephesians chapter 5, that, uh, the, that Paul is writing to the Ephesian church and he talks first about the subject of wine. And he talks about why it's not, uh, uh, it's not acceptable for a Christian to become drunk on wine. And he uses this word uh, dis dissipation. Literally, the word means, it's a really funny word when you translate it, it literally means unsavedness. It literally means when you get drunk on wine, it leads to everything that's going to make you unsaved. And so he, he, he condemns this in the flesh because of the things that it produces. There's nothing good uh, or fruitful kingdom in the kingdom of God that ever is produced when someone is drunk on alcohol. So the Apostle Paul quite clearly states that this isn't something that is advantageous. So he kind of speaks to a cause and an effect. And then in the next verse... He really begins to draw a diagram that we and make connections that we don't often make. He says this, but be filled with the spirit. And then he begins to explain the results of being filled with the spirit. So if being drunk with wine leads to debauchery, as one other translation says, then being filled in the, with the spirit is going to lead to what follows in the following verse. Speaking to one another in Psalms hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to your heart in the Lord. So now we know the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost is speaking in other tongues, amen. But after you receive the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues, there are often experiences that you will go through that you are continuing to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And one of these experiences, the Apostle Paul says, is when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you can't keep it inside and you begin to sing, you begin to worship. One of the most natural things for somebody that is a saved child of God is that when the worship begins to start in the church service uh, or the songs begin to be sung, uh, there is just something uh, that wells up inside of you. Uh, you can't hold it in uh, because when you've got the spirit inside, uh, there's something something about it huh, that wants to get on the outside. I've never understood people been in church 30, 40 years, and when the presence of God starts to move, there's just a, kind of a, a, a pale face and a crossed-armed stance that has taken place. But when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, the most natural thing you can do uh, is that when you begin to feel the presence of God, uh, there's a song that comes in your voice. Uh, you might not be able to sing well, and that's a problem I know that I have. Sometimes I, I got a song in my heart, but if I sing it, it's going to bust everyone's eardrums in the the building but the bible doesn't say you have to sing well to sing unto the lord did you know that singing not just listening to other people sing but singing is a very important part of your worship experience 
And this is, uh, and I'm not going to get too much into this right now. It's a pet peeve of mine. But this is uh, where our culture has evolved. We come to church and we don't sing, but we listen to other people sing. And the way the elders used to do it back in the day, right now there's a, there's a large evolution that's taking place in our worship services. And, I, and for the most part, I think it's good. I think a lot of it is healthy, but we, we, we worship the praise teams right now. And pray, the concept of a praise team is only about 20 or 30, maybe 40 years old. It's a relatively new concept. Before that, we sang with choirs. Anybody remember a choir that used to sing every service? And if you went to a smaller church, you just had the pastor's wife on an organ or pumping an accordion, you know. And some elders know what I'm talking about because someone waved their hand all right praise God and be, and somewhere in between there you had uh, you had quartets and you had trios and people that would get up and sing and sister Haney alluded to this on Sunday morning a little bit but one integral aspect is regardless of the culture regardless of how we run our worship services one thing must always stay true is that when we come to the house of God it's very advantageous that we don't just listen to other people sing but we start to engage and we start to sing with the worship ourselves and this is an important part of your prayer life it's a it's a sign that you are filled with the spirit it's a sign that Paul says if any man is merry let him sing it's a sign that when there is joy in your heart regardless of what's going on on the outside no matter how bad it is David said I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continuously be in my mouth and there's this funny thing about the Bible if you really start to if you really start to study it and you really start to discover the truths, you can actually begin to dive into the context of Psalm 32, that I will bless the Lord at all times. And you will understand that this took place after an instance where David stood before the Philistine king Abimelech and he feared for his life. And he thought Goliath, these were the, uh, the kings of Goliath, and they thought that he was going to be destroyed. He was worried for his life. And so he comes up with this idea where he begins to foam at the mouth and spit becomes to run down his beard and he pleads the case of insanity acts like he's crazy so these people won't kill him and so the king says man this is a crazy dude i'm about to he's looking like some of these people in stockton man uh, he's looking like these people under the highway four bridge you know what i'm talking about so he he, he, he says, I'm not going to have anything to do with this man. And David leaves this experience uh, and says, I will bless the Lord uh, at all times. Uh, and his praise shall be continually in my mouth. Uh, the understanding of that uh, is when you've got Jesus on the inside, uh, it doesn't matter how bad it gets uh, on the outside. There is nothing uh, in this world uh, that's able to steal the song uh, that's in my heart. Uh, the Bible says that Paul and Silas, uh, they're again getting ready to get executed they were just waiting to die and the bible says they started to sing songs at midnight it couldn't get any darker it couldn't get any worse but there was something that welled inside of them i don't care how bad it gets i don't care how broke i am i don't care how sick i am in my body nothing is going to steal my praise nothing is going to steal my worship it's a natural response to being filled with the Holy Ghost that a song would come forth out of your mouth and music is a very very intense part of the human experience very intense part Americans spend more than four hours a day listening to music in 2021 17 billion dollars in revenue was made in the music industry alone one Point one three trillion songs were streamed in 2021 alone. Something you've known about the nature of music is that often one's identity can be wrapped up in the style of music that they choose. Oftentimes when people listen to a certain genre of music, they start to appear and they start to act out the content that is found in those songs. There are 47 different genres of music, 337 subtypes of music. We choose music that we feel that fits us as a person. It's integral to the human experience. It's the first question. I said this was a message for young adults. It's the first question that you ask on a date. The first thing you want to know about somebody that is going to be your prospective spouse, your prospective partner for life, 
One of the first questions you're going to ask is, what kind of music do you listen to? Because we, when you know what kind of music somebody listens to, you automatically begin to know a few other things about them. It is crazy. Different nationalities, different ethnicities are expected to like a certain genre of music. If you live in a southern part of the, uh, of the United States, you might like country music. If you live in the inner cities, you might like rap music or uh, there are certain folk music for certain countries. And I've learned that music will actually tie into an ethnic identity. Music is integral to our human experience. Confucius said it this way. I thought this was a wise statement. He said, if one should desire to know whether a kingdom is well governed, if its morals are good or bad, the quality of its music will furnish the answer. In other words, your choice of music will often mirror your values. Music can, yes, it can mirror our identity, but I have learned, as I mentioned it before, it can also shape our identity as well. And so, looking at Confucius' statement, if you want to know the values of a, of a nation or a country, look at the music it is listening to. And so I did a research. Now, uh, secular music isn't really something that I, I've ever been into, and, and I, a lot of this stuff I never even knew before I looked it up. And so some of you might know what I'm talking about. Most of these, the names of these songs are absolutely foreign to me. Uh, but the most popular song of all time, this is the most listened song. I want you to think of like the gravity of all the songs that have ever been written in the history of the world. And with technology and streaming services like Spotify, YouTube Music, and all Pandora, all the various streaming services, we can say conclusively, not it's, it's the best song of all time, but it's the most listened to song of all time, is a song called Despacito. More than any other song in history, more than Amazing Grace, more than any song that has to do with cultural values or has to do with integrity or any type of love song, it's a song, I'd have no idea what it's about, and then I Googled the meaning, and that was the worst mistake of my life. I'll just say it's an extremely sexually explicit song. And it's the most listened to song of all time. The most popular artist, again, none of this I knew before researching it. The most popular artist is a man by Ed, by, named Ed Sheeran. The top song he has, it's called Shape of You. It's about him in a drunken stupor, lusting after the body of a woman that he does not personally know. This is what our society values. This is what our culture values. Inexplicate, inexplicate, unreserved sin. And this is the value of our society. And so to reiterate, the values of, of a society will be reflected in its music. And I've learned that music can change the fabric of society. Music affects the core of our being. This is why we can memorize hundreds of song lyrics. This is why songs get stuck in your head. You know, I was thinking about this today, and you ever get just the most random? I mean, it's just like a jingle, you know? You get that random, you're driving in the car, and that, that car insurance commercial comes on, and that jingle is stuck in your head all day long. And I'm like, what a worthless sp space in my brain. I would much, like, I was thinking about this, Brother Abrego. Why can't I get scripture stuck in my brain? You know what I mean? Like, why can't I just be sitting there? He that dwelleth in the secret place, you know, and just <gasps> get up, you know? It's always like some dumb 1-800-CAR commercial, you know? What a waste of space in my brain. But that's not an accident. Music has a tremendous power to get into the core of your being. There's a reason it gets stuck in your head. Music doesn't just hit your mind, but it affects your emotions. This is why we use music to get in the mood or get motivated. This is why sometimes we, before we pray, we listen to music. Or if you're going to work out, you listen to music. Or if you're going to study or if you need to calm down, you listen to music because the rhythm and flow affect your emotions that regular speech does not affect. This is scientifically true. Music bypasses the frontal lobe of, frontal lobe of your brain. The frontal lobe has to do with reason critical thinking and planning. And so music goes directly past the part of your brain that deals with reason and goes back into the part of your brain that deals with emotion. 
in short, listen to me tonight because I want to help somebody in their walk with God. Music makes you do more than think. It makes you feel. And music always has a message. The rhythm of that song and the dynamic of that song can often cause that message to enter into your brain undetected. This is why you remember the car insurance commercial. This is why you remember just that random nursery rhyme is because you're not spending any time. I'll spend hours pouring over the word of God, trying to memorize the word of God. And just a few hours later, I'm struggling to recall the verses. But a song that they sing one or two times, I can remember every lyric because there's something about the nature of music that passes beyond that reasoning part of your brain. And it goes to the part of your body that causes you to feel and it causes you to make decisions through a place that is deep inside of you so it's care it is we have to be careful of the type of music that enters into our spirits it greatly 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 will affect you satan has thoroughly thoroughly understood this concept and i'm afraid that music now is more satanic than it's ever been i mean just in looking up what the most popular songs were i came across Dozens of, uh, of songs that were in the top 100 list that had pentagrams on the front and 666 on the front and, and bloody figures on the front. These aren't the backwood songs. These aren't, these aren't the underground songs. These are the mainstream songs uh, that everybody is listening to. And this, I believe, is a major reason why our society is shifting in the direction that it is. It's because it's not that these things are being taught to their minds, uh, but they're entering into their spirit uh, when they're just going uh, uh, about their day and they're just listening to a shuffle playlist uh, and the enemy is indoctrinating their spirit with filth and perversion. And so what messages are you allowing into your spirit? What messages are you allowing into your home? And Sister Haney talked about this on Sunday and the, the significance of her mom playing gospel tracks all throughout the house because it was creating an atmosphere where the glory of God can felt welcome. And so if you can create an atmosphere where the glory of God feels welcome, you can very much create an atmosphere where the glory of God feels unwelcome. And I want it to be said about my children that when they're just, we might not be doing Bible study, we might not be having prayer meeting, uh, but I want their memories to be while they're walking through the house. They remember uh, that mom and dad used to play that anointed music, uh, and the presence of God used to consistently dwell uh, in our house. Uh, I can't play with this stuff. Uh, I can't play with these messages getting in the mind uh, of our young people and our young adults, uh, but we have got to be radical uh, about making a place in our home uh, where the presence of God feels comfortable to dwell. And so I have a few themes. I have about four themes if you're a note taker tonight. I didn't have, uh, I didn't have time to make a PowerPoint. So uh, theme number one I, I want to talk about for a minute is I got about a half hour. I'm going to end right at 8.30. Music was not an invention of man. It's very important to understand this. But music predated mankind. The Bible says in Job that the sons of God or the angels, they sang at creation. Before the created world ever existed, there was music. In Zephaniah 317, you can read the verse later, actually teaches that God himself sings. Some theologians argue, and, and there's a debate among this, and I think it's very interesting, that God did not create music. But rather, music is a part of God's very being. Music is a part of our natural creation, even before the created world. It's part of our being made in the image of God. Our ability to compose music and our ability to, to, to thrive in music is actually the part of us that's created in the image of God. And so this is very important to note for the rest of the study tonight is that music is first spiritual before it is natural. Theme number two, music is heavily connected with the spirit realm. It's, ve it's very heavily connected with the spirit realm. We're going to look at an example uh, in 1 Samuel 6, 14. To give you a little context, uh, God had rejected the first king of Israel named Saul 
And Saul was in this, this limbo period where he was still wearing the crown, but the anointing of God had lifted off of him. And he was trying to do things that were not in the will of God. And the Bible says that a distressing spirit, a lying spirit, an evil spirit came upon Saul and he was sorely vexed. And he began to talk to his servants and ask them what he could do about it. And one of the individuals in the group knew something. He said, if I could just get a harpist to you, I can get somebody who's anointed at playing the harp. I know that it's going to do some good. And it says in 1 Samuel 16, verse 17. So Saul said to his servant, provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. Verse 18. Then one of his servants answered and said, look, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is, a, who is skillful in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech and a handsome person. The Lord is with him. And so it was whenever the spirit from God was upon Saul that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become refreshed and well. And the distressing spirit would depart from him. And this word refresh literally means to be wide or to be spacious. And so what Saul was experiencing in the spirit is quite literally what we would call anxiety. He felt pressed in on all sides. He felt like he had nowhere to go in his mind or in his spirit. He felt as if the walls were encroaching around him, as if he was going to be crushed spiritually. And when David began to play, the Bible said he was refreshed or his spirit was made wide. He was able to breathe again. David's music of musical ability had the ability to give Saul relief even from spiritual demonic attacks that were on his mind. And so I've, I've known this to be true. I've seen this so often is that when you come into a church service, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter. You could have had the worst day in the world, but the moment you get into the service and they begin to sing the song, it is like a weight is lifted off of your shoulders because there is a spiritual element to music. There is a element that is able to take the weights. This is why our musicians are so very important. And this is what I felt burdened on my heart that when you are a musician, and you are anointed by God, you have the ability when you begin to sing and when you begin to play to deal with spiritual strongholds and attacks on people's minds long before the preacher ever gets to the pulpit. And if the music's anointed, the preacher can get up to the pulpit and he can flow in the Holy Ghost because there was somebody that sang under the anointing of God. They didn't just sing with talent. They didn't just flow with their natural vibrato. But there was something in the spirit that begin to work in the congregation. Uh, this is why we need uh, spiritual musicians. Uh, this is why we need uh, spiritual singers and worship leaders. Uh, not just people are talented and I appreciated talented people. I really do. Uh, I'm thankful for people that hone their craft. I'm thankful for people that practice. I believe you should play skillfully on your instruments but just as much as the preacher needs to be anointed uh, when he gets behind the pulpit. Uh, just as much as the man of God uh, needs to make sure his mind Mind, uh, is submitted to the word of God. Uh, every one of our musicians, uh, every one of our instrument players, our drummer, our piano, uh, I know all eyes aren't going to be on you, uh, but David wasn't singing to Saul. Uh, David was just playing the harp. And oftentimes I've learned, and I don't believe this applies to anybody in this building, I'm not calling anybody out, but I have seen a lot of times uh, with musicians it, it, is that if they were to ever falter in their commitment with God, well, they, they spent so much time practicing the piano, practicing the drums, uh, practicing the bass guitar. And if they're to backslide, they, they don't really have a venue by which they're able to use those skills anymore. It feels as if you wasted your entire life practicing these instruments because the world, unless you're really, really good, doesn't have a place for you. So oftentimes they, can, they don't feel that it's important and they just live their life under the radar because they want to still have have the ability uh, to express their craft, uh, but this will affect uh, the spiritual dynamic of a service. It is important, and this is why, and, and this isn't my job, Pastor Lopez and, and Pastor Haney will handle it later, but there's a reason why uh, we put such wonderful standards on this platform. 
There is a reason why we hold this platform to such a high standard because when you get behind a microphone and when you get behind a pulpit, it is very important, the state of your heart. It's very important, the state of your spirit because we've got people in Stockton whose mind are blown on drugs. They're dealing with demons. They're dealing with all kinds of distressing spirits. And if you'll just flow in the Holy Ghost before the preacher ever gets to the pulpit, there'll be deliverance. I want to get to that place like I've seen so many times before where people are receiving the Holy Ghost in the song service. Amen. I love that place in the service, Brother Lopez, uh, where we got to we gotta wonder, oh, man, do, should I preach or not, man? This thing is going crazy. Uh, I remember those days uh, where it was just every single service uh, where there was that awkward moment. Am I going to preach or not? Uh, because there's something powerful. Uh, there's deliverance that takes place uh, when apostolic musicians uh, are I'm worried about my craft. Uh, I'm worried about sounding good. Uh, but I'm also worried about the state of my spirit. Uh, I'm going to spend one or two days fasting before I worship lead. I'm going to spend one or two days getting on my face before God before I sing unto the Lord because I know when I lift up my voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. I might just be hitting the two or three of you tonight, but I feel like God is pulling and drawing somebody tonight. Amen. And so this feeling can often this sensation, rather, can often become a hindrance in our services as well because people will learn to use music as a way to find temporary relief from their distress rather than going to the source, giving it to God and getting right with God. This was the case of Saul. Saul never came and got right with God. He never repented before the Lord. He just, every time it got overwhelming, he started to borrow on somebody else's anointing. And so it can go both ways. I was talking to Brother Kevin Daniel, who's been at this church. He was at this church for so many years, wonderful, most, uh, anointed musician. And he said it's because of this sensation that oftentimes in Western culture, we can worship, worship. We enjoy that sensation that music gives us. So we start to form songs uh, that get us there quicker than the old doctrinal songs used to be able to do. We don't come to service to worship God. I'm not saying anybody in particularly in this room. People don't come to service to worship God. They come to service to get the feeling that makes them feel better. And so it's very important, even in Christian music, what kind of Christian music you listen to. I know it's not popular. Man, I'm preaching to the young adults, 30 and under tonight, all right? It's very important, even the type of Christian music you listen to. So we talk about this phrase, secular music. Okay, the word secular, it's a very complicated definition, but it just basically means uh, anthrocentric, meaning man-centered. Man is the center of the show. He's the star of the show, and it's what man wants, and oftentimes this will produce in terrible songs and terrible types of things because it's what's at the core desire of man. But how many of you know that there is Christian secular music? It's music that has God as a character. He's just not the main character. They have God in the song, but God's just there to give me a good feeling and give me the victory and heal my body, but I'm the main character of the show. Biblical Christianity, God will bless you, God will love you, God will deliver you, God will set you free, he will set you on a solid path, I'm telling you, but he is the main character of the story. I don't come to church for what God can give me, or I don't worship, Brother Moling said it this way, he said the worship, uh, or, or the, the word rather is the part of God, the part of the service where God gives to us, uh, but the worship is the part of the service where we give to God. And it's very important. It's very important. I'm calling on apostolic uh, 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 songwriters uh, to write songs uh, that give glory to God, uh, that lift up God, uh, that put him as the centerpiece of our lives. Uh, if I've got anything to brag about, uh, it's not my life. Uh, it's not anything that I've done. Uh, if I've got anything to boast of, Paul said, uh, it's Jesus Christ uh, and him crucified. Uh, I just want to tell you, uh, we've got to get back to the place uh, where we're listening and writing songs uh, that give glory. Glory to God. And this is why it's very important, even 
Uh, I, I'm not going to call out any groups in particular, but there are some groups uh, that write songs not necessarily to give glory to God, uh, but to give you a quick path to the good feeling. The philosopher of, Ren of the Renaissance, Giovanni Mindela, said this, music produces effects on the mind like good medicine produces on the body. Medicine can often take care of symptoms. But if you need music in order to pray, if you need music in order to sleep, you might just be calming down symptoms that need to be treated at its core. So the third thing tonight is music. It's connected to the, the spiritual realm, but it's also greatly connected to the uh, activity of the supernatural. There's an example in 2 Kings 3.14. Elijah was not, Elisha was just not in the mood to prophesy. It says in 2 Kings 3, 14, as the Lord of hosts lives before who I stand. Surely it was not that I regarded the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. I would not look at you, nor will I see you. He says, I was not in the mood. I didn't want to look at you. I knew what you was doing, and I didn't want any part with you. He says, but now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musicians played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Music is greatly intertwined with the activity of the supernatural. When you begin to sing songs, they might not make a whole lot of sense to the natural mind, but if they are aligned with this word, the Bible says he will confirm his word with signs following. Don't worry about songs that necessarily are going to get people on their feet, but worry about songs that are biblically accurate and God will back up his word. Hallelujah. I, the walls of Jericho fell at the sound of a trumpet. As I mentioned before, the, the jail that Paul and Silas were in fell when they began to sing. The final point, and uh, if Brother Brandon could come back tonight, I'm, I'm wrapping up. It is a way that God receives worship, obviously, and it enhances your worship. Let me explain. Psalm 150 teaches, and I, I spoke to the musicians a moment ago, but I really want to address it again, that there are channels of praise and worship that are exclusive to musical instruments. When you begin to play your instrument, you are not just enhancing the worship, you are offering the worship. And this is why I believe, and I, I had a long talk with Sister Vanessa Abrego yesterday, she's our Lifeline music director. She did such a good job tonight. And we were talking about the challenges, the attacks that we see that are falling on the musicians of our movement. Because I believe if you don't take your calling seriously, we've got so many people in this church. We've got drum players and piano players and, and guitar players and bass players that they, they've just laid it down. They've never picked it back up again. But you bring an element to the, to the services. You bring an element that cannot be matched just with the human voice alone. I remember my, one of my closest friends, Brother James Langston. He was telling me about a youth camp experience that he had. And we had one of those services, Sister Smith, where we're just, we're all laid out in the spirit. And God's doing a mighty work. And everyone's just, it, it, we're there to pray all night. And Brother James Langston played the guitar. He wasn't, to my knowledge, he wasn't lifting up vocal praises to the Lord. He's just playing that guitar. And he said, all of a sudden, something came upon him. And he said, while he's playing the guitar, he actually started to get drunk in the spirit, playing the guitar. Because when you worship God and you praise God, even if it's not with your mouth, uh, you connect your spirit with him. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. And praise isn't just offered with the mouth, but it's offered with your instruments. So I'm calling on some musicians tonight to remember what God put into your spirit. Remember the burden that you had. Remember the anointing that God had on you. Uh, because if you'll pick it up again uh, and you'll give it back to the Lord uh, and you'll cover it in prayer, uh, you will be just as important as a move of God uh, as anybody else is in the service. Hallelujah. 
I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Can we just lift our hands and worship the Lord right now? Hallelujah. I just feel to say something in the spirit tonight. I feel like God is wanting me to share with somebody that the enemy is after your song. Because if he can steal your song, he can steal the rest of your praise and worship along with it. Let this be, and this, and this is the teaching element of the service. Let it be that when you're in your prayer room, maybe you don't have the best voice, but there is a channel of worship that singing and playing begins to open in your life. Begin to sing unto the Lord. When you're in a service and you know the song, begin to lift your voice up because there's something powerful. Because we speak with our mind, but we sing with our soul. Finally, the last theme of the, the lesson tonight is music is not just all about worship. Huge component is worship. But there is a forgotten element of music that I believe we have to come back to. Colossians 3.16 says this. I think we have enough time to get it on the screen. Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Again, like the passage before, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, there's a song that comes forward. Also, when you're filled with the word of God, Listen to what happens. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. There's a lot in this passage, but first, singing is a method of encouragement. That's why so often, brother, the old timers, when they'd sing or they'd preach, they'd always, they'd always start it with a song. Or the Geisler, when Brother Geisler gets up here, man, he just always starts it with one of those hymns I never heard before, you know? But I might have never heard it before, but there's just something about that song. It's not just a song that's words only, but every experience he ever went through is attached to that song. When an elder starts to sing Amazing Grace, oh, Brother Will Stewart, when you start singing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Whew. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Every experience you ever went through in your life is attached to that song. And you, everybody in this building is encouraged. Sister Sisk, I've heard you in this building multiple times. You talk about it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. The blood will never lose its power and everything you ever went through in life is attached to that song and the encouragement starts to flood it starts to fill the building and yeah we should do this behind the pulpit but let's do it one let's do it one another i know of times i've been in the hospitals visiting elders at their last dying moment and a, just a song would come in the room and all of a sudden the weight that felt so heavy a moment ago all of a sudden it began to lift because music is a method of encouragement to your fellow brother. You know that music is also, someone needs to hear this tonight. Music is also a very important process in mourning. You know in the Psalms, it's 150 Psalms. They're all songs, mo probably most of you knew that. And out of those 150 Psalms, almost half of them, 40% of them, are psalms of lament. Now, you know, we don't get up and sing about how bad our lives are, you know. That's not gonna be, that's not gonna fly at Friday Night Landmark, you know. And that's fine. There's an appropriate time. And I don't think a service setting or a conference setting is appropriate for that. But there's some part of it for your prayer life. There's psalms in here that talk about feeling neglected and feeling rejected and feeling like everybody hates you. And feeling like there's nobody there for you. And there's something about them when you begin to read them, but you begin to sing them. We have a song, one of my favorites, 
It's the third Psalm. It says, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they, this is how I feel, many are they that rise up against me. Many there be that say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down to sleep and I slept, but I awaked for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people who set themselves against me round about why? Because he's my shield. There is so many tools in this word. You might be going through loss, you might be going through death, you might be going through sickness, you might be going through persecution. If you can just unlock the power of music in your life, I'm not talking about just putting on the iPod or putting on uh, the stereo system. I'm talking let a song uh, come deep from the well of your spirit. Uh, talks about spiritual songs, uh, songs that wasn't written by nobody else, uh, but they were written by the Holy Ghost. Amen. It might not rhyme, but it makes sense to me. Amen. Because it's coming from the deep well of my soul. Paul said, I'll sing with the Spirit. I'll sing with the understanding and I'll sing with the spirit. Sometimes you, get in, sometimes you get into prayer and you've prayed all the English you could pray. And you've prayed in tongues all you can pray. And all of a sudden you start singing in tongues. And there's just an element of the spirit that begins to attach. And you feel it lift off of you. Finally, the last point. It's not the most climactic point, but I believe it's very important. Music is a method teaching future generations the doctrine that we believe. This is what it says, teaching and admonishing one another. This is why it's absolutely imperative that our songs are doctrinally accurate. This is why it's imperative that the songs I listen to do not promote Christian values that I do not believe line up with the word of God. Just because it's Christian doesn't necessarily mean it's pleasing to God. And I feel it strongly in my spirit tonight. I feel there's an attack on our musicians. I feel there's an attack on you personally, but also on your mind that you are not important and that you have no value in the church. But I've just felt the commission of the Holy Ghost to proclaim that as a lie of the enemy. We need our musicians to be more on fire than they've ever been before, more spiritual than they've ever been before, more sold out than they've ever been before, more putting their flesh on the altar more than they've ever been before. Because when you get about eight or ten praise singers and six or seven band members and a worship leader uh, that are all submitted to God. Uh, I'm telling you, healing, virtue, deliverance, uh, it starts to flow throughout the building. Can we all stand tonight? I said at the beginning, I didn't know what you were going to receive out of this message. Uh, some of you, I'm probably preaching to the choir. Maybe some of you feel like you, you got to change some stuff. Other of you feel challenged. And I want to make a call, first of all, to all of our musicians tonight. If you're a musician in this house, Singer, instrument, past or present. Maybe you're actively engaged right now or you've been engaged in times long ago. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I want you to make your way down to this altar right now. Hallelujah. Now church, I'm so grateful that I go to a church that covers their ministers in prayer. There, I am, I think this is the best church that is on planet earth. I am so unworthy. Not a day goes by, not a week for sure goes by without one of you coming up to me saying, I'm praying for you, Brother Ellis. I'm covering you in prayer and I feel your prayers and your prayers work and your prayers are effective. And I'm just asking our church tonight to take those same powerful prayers and could we direct it at our musicians tonight? I'm not telling any of you that 
it's time to come back. I'm not, I'm not saying God might have you want to pause. I'm just saying that if you feel called to the music ministry, I know there's an attack on your life because you bring something so valuable to the service that cannot be replaced if you are not in right alignment with God. So everybody in the altar, I just feel to do this. Could you just lift your hands up to heaven? And church of God, could you just stretch your hands forward? And would you just pray one of those anointed prayers that you know how to pray? In the name of Jesus. I'm asking any altar workers or pastors if you would come down, lay hands on those that are down here. Hallelujah. I believe God's doing a work in this altar right now. Church, would you just begin to intercede for a little bit? Would you begin to just intercede and pray for those that are down here? Hallelujah. God's doing a great work in this altar right now. I want to make a second call tonight. For those of you that feel as if the enemy has stolen your song. You come to church, you don't want to sing, you don't want to lift up your voice. Dragged down by the weights of life. That when the song service gets going, it's like you can't even open your mouth. Would you just be so bold to say, yeah, I'm struggling right now. The enemy has taken my song from me. If you'll come down to the front, we'll pray for you. And we'll believe God to restore you and to feel you. And that that song would come out of you again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming. Amen. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Amen. If we could just get one singer up here tonight, just one. We're going to pray. We're going to work these altars uh, because God is doing a work in our music ministry tonight. Amen.
Jesus.